Hey everybody, Canadian Operator here, and this is my IWI X95 Tavor chambered in 5.56 NATO. The key knight among you may have probably already realized that I've already done a video on this rifle, and if you haven't checked it out, you can see it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. But today we're going to be talking about something very important, something that you, as a firearms owner in Canada, really need to know, especially if you own one of these. Any kind of firearm that is capable of taking a standard Stanag or AR pattern magazine. And I know that one looks a little bit weird, so stick with me. Before we get started though, I just want to let you know that I'm not a lawyer and nothing that I say today or really any day should be taken as legal advice. If you're looking for information on the Canadian Criminal Code or any legal aspect of firearms ownership in Canada, you should speak to a lawyer and only a lawyer. That being said, you can always feel free to share your thoughts down below in the comments section and check out the description for a link to our Discord server where you can come and hang out with a bunch of other awesome gunnies in Canada and all around the world. That being said, let's go ahead and get started with this very interesting discussion. So I've got a few mags with me today. This one is going to be one that you're probably going to be most familiar with. This is going to be your standard AR magazine. Nothing in there, of course, as with all the other magazines here. And as I'm pretty sure, frustratingly, you'd be willing to admit that yours are pinned down to five, just like mine is, which kind of sucks. Kind of means that you need to buy a bunch of them because you don't want to reload so often. And yeah, it's just uh, it's just kind of a mess, right? So there's a couple of other mags that I have with me today. One of them is going to be this one. This is the LAR-15 magazine, and it's designed for a pistol. I know, hold your excitement, we'll get to that. And then there's another one here as well, which is a little bit of sort of a next level LAR-15 mag, which is technically two LAR-15 mags. A little bit of force needed, but you can separate these two. Uh, and you can actually use them independently, or you can put them together. And you can have them reversible, so that you can go through whatever number of rounds you have in here, and then simply just swap it over, stick that back in the magwell of your firearm, and continue on. Before we talk about the intricacies of these though, we need to understand a little bit more about the law that governs rifle and pistol magazines designed to accept center fire cartridges that end up going into firearms that are semi-automatic in nature. So let's talk about that first. So when we're talking about this law here, we're gonna be talking mostly about the law that governs magazine capacity for uh, magazines that are designed for semi-automatic firearms, both pistols and rifles, uh, which are able to accept center fire cartridges only. The reason for this is because rim fire is largely unregulated with few exceptions. <coughs> BX25. <coughs> I really got to have somebody look at that cough for me. Um, but generally speaking, uh, that is what's going to affect most people. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So starting with rifles, if you have a semi-automatic firearm that's capable of discharging a center fire cartridge, then you are limited to a capacity of five in a magazine designed for that specific rifle. Now I say designed because things will kind of change as you'll see here very soon. Now for pistols, it's a little bit different. If you have a magazine that's designed for a pistol that can discharge a center fire cartridge in a semi-automatic manner, then your limit in that pistol magazine is gonna be 10. But doesn't that kind of look a lot like that? I mean, yeah, right? They kind of look similar and I think you're just starting to see where I'm going with this because this is an LAR-15 magazine. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but is designed for the LAR-15 pistol. This pistol just happens to take a rifle caliber cartridge, which means that the magazines are pretty much gonna be identical, which means, yeah, you're gonna be able to use these in your rifles, which is awesome. So let me get my Tavor and let me show you. This is really cool. All right, so we've got the Tavor here. Let's just double check and make sure it's nice and clear. And it is, and I'll just go ahead and just decock that very quickly. There we go. I did do a full check before the video, by the way, just uh, doing a little uh, secondary check there just to make sure we're all nice and clear. And again, we don't have any kind of ammunition in any of the magazines as well. So just see, see, we're nice and safe here. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the standard Stanag or uh, AR pattern mag. That's gonna be this guy here. And as expected, that just fits in there nicely. But again, only five rounds. And the thing is, these things are super bulky, right? So uh, if you're, you're looking to travel light, 
uh, and you want to bring you know a decent amount of ammo with you, then you know if you have only one or two of these, or maybe even three, that's still not really going to be enough. So you're going to be reloading that magazine quite often because again, you've only got five rounds in there, which kind of sucks. Um, I'll speak to the bit about public safety in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and get through all the magazines so you guys can see what they look like. Now this, again, this is going to be the LAR-15 pistol magazine. And again, the reason why this is totally okay in here, other than just that it fits, right? Um, not necessarily okay just because it fits, but because the law says that as long as it's designed for a pistol, it can have 10 rounds. Uh, and because we're able to fit it into our rifle, because that, that law is not looking at the type of firearm we can use this in, but the type of firearm that this was designed for, which again, remember, is a pistol, right? So we're able to put this in there. And what I really like about this one is it's really short. So if you're looking to maybe do some bench rest shooting or some shooting while prone, um, this is very useful for that. And you've got 10 rounds now instead of five, which is great. That means you don't need to spend as much money on these. You can just get a few of them and you're already gonna basically have the same amount of capacity as you would with double this many in this size, right? So this is really nice. Go ahead and take that one out. And uh, the last one we're gonna take a look at is gonna be the cross mag. This one is honestly the best because it gives you so much flexibility. So, you know, we go through our 10 rounds there. We've got 10 rounds on one side, flip it over, 10 rounds in the other side, and then go ahead and stick another one in there. And so again, the benefit of that is that when you're out at the range or Maybe you're hunting, right? Maybe you have a firearm. Tavor's maybe not the greatest example for this, right? But maybe you have a firearm that you do go hunting with that can accept these. You know, having those follow-up shots can be really important. It could be the difference between the animal being injured, bleeding out, and, you know, dying in pain versus, you know, putting that animal down quickly uh, and avoid any kind of suffering or perhaps even being able to defend yourself, you know, in the wilderness from a wild animal. And you know, if you only get a few shots off, admittedly five, you know, if you're a good shot, you could probably get that job done. But if you have one of these, that just gives you so much more breathing room because you know you have additional follow-up shots if you need them. So let's talk about sort of the implications of the public safety part about this as well and my arguments as to why I think these are just totally fine. Right, so one thing that I think we need to consider in the firearms community, not so much on our own behalf, but on how basically other people, namely criminals, make us look in, in the limelight of the popular media and in politics is, well, you know, these are high capacity magazines, so you really shouldn't be allowed to have those. And here's the thing, right? Um, whenever you tell somebody that they can't have something, if they're a law-abiding citizen, uh, generally speaking, they're gonna be on board. Okay, I can't have that, it's illegal. Fine, you know, I'll just work with what I have and uh, you know, I don't want to stir the pot, I don't wanna get in trouble, I don't wanna cause issues, right? And that is the majority of the firearms community, that's us, right? We have a lot of restrictions already, we have months of licensing that we need to get through, and I say months, I mean that's generally a lot of waiting time, but we have to do courses, we need to get vetted, we have to get licensed, and don't forget that continuing eligibility as well. We're getting background checked every single day, right? That is not something most Canadians can say. And so we've got a ton to lose. Uh, at the very least, we're losing potentially a hobby, a lifestyle, or a passion. And at most, we could be losing the ability to sustain our families or protect ourselves, right? So that is a huge thing. And it's not something that we want to lose access to. So as legal firearm owners, you and I, we're, we're okay, you know, the laws are really strict and sometimes they kind of suck, but you know what, we suck it up and we deal with it because we are legal, law-abiding citizens and, and legal firearms owners, right? The other side of that argument is gonna be criminals, right? Organized crime, criminals, they're not really gonna care, right? Uh, something like this that theoretically can have a total of 20 rounds, even though it's two separate magazines, even something like this that can have 10 rounds, this is not something that criminals are gonna be shopping for. And the reason for that is because they already have firearms that we consider to be prohibited, firearms that we consider to be restricted, right? They have those already. There's automatic weapons out there on the street that are smuggled every day into Canada illegally by people who would do somebody else harm or who wanna profit from that activity. And for the same reasons, there's going to be people that are going to be illegally importing and smuggling in magazines that are gonna have way more than five rounds. They're gonna have 20, 25, 30 rounds, and the people that are using them for nefarious purposes are going to be using them whether we make them prohibited or not. So really, the only people that are going to pay for taking out the rivet, which 
I don't recommend anybody to do is going to be somebody who used to be a law-abiding citizen, got tired of it, and just took out their rivets. And now they're in possession of probably a handful of what would be a prohibited device. Again, not something I condone whatsoever, but it's just something to think about, right? So the way that I look at this is, you know, you might even think about this as a loophole. I don't think it's a loophole because the RCMP literally laid it out. And again, I'll link to everything down below. They just said, if, if the magazine is designed for a pistol, the limit is 10. If it's designed for a rifle, the limit is five. And you know, there is a little bit of crossplay between that. If you happen to have a pistol design or a pistol magazine, designed for a pistol that can fit in a rifle, there's no reason why that is illegal because it just happens to fit. But the law specifically looks at what this kind of, uh, what, what firearm this pistol magazine is designed for. And because it's designed for a pistol, that is exactly the reason why we can have this in a pistol, but we can also have this in a rifle as long as it fits. So. Hopefully that's good information for you. Uh, do let me know in the uh, comments down below your thoughts on this, whether you're for, whether you're against. Uh, to me, uh, you know, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I wanna have a, a, a prudent, you know, good discussion on both sides of it. I know there's gonna be a lot of gunnies down there talking about how, yeah, man, we need more capacity, you know, higher capacity magazines. And you know what, if you're one of those people, that's cool. Uh, but if you're one of those people that's watching this in disgust thinking, wow, these guys are just getting away with this and that and, you know, it's terrible, nobody should have a gun. And I wanna hear from you too, because I'm not here to convince you to have a firearm and I, I'm not here to convince you to have a higher capacity magazine than five if you just wanna stick with these, that's absolutely fine. All I'm saying is that there are laws out there, they need to be followed, but this is the extent to which we can follow this particular law, and I'm always curious what you have to say. So, that being said, a bit of a long-winded outro here, do let me know in the comments what you think, come on by our Discord link, again, it's gonna be down in the description below, as is all of the related documentation that I'm gonna to link to, and hopefully, that is gonna be some uh, thought-provoking information and uh, a discussion as well. So that being said, again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.